Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video, I will show you how I made this sewing machine table conversion. As woodworkers, we are sometimes approached to repair, fix, or modify some things. Usually some old furniture. I was asked to repurpose this old sewing machine table just to fill in the cavity where the sewing machine sat. Now, the customer was not concerned too much about the wood or stain colors so much as long as it was not a stark contrast. So when doing these kind of repairs you must get a written agreement with the customer to define expectations, limit your liability, and protect your right to get paid. These kind of repairs will never be like new furniture grade quality and colors and wood grains can often be near impossible to match. Get an agreement to protect yourself regardless of how unconcerned the customer may be about the end results. In this video I will show you a few techniques that you may learn to use in your woodworking and repairs. I was asked to convert this old sewing machine cabinet into something of a usable table. So what we've done is this opens up here like sewing machines used to and then here would be the sewing machine that would flip up and uh, people could work with the sewing machine to do things. So what I'm going to do is to fill this cavity in here with a piece of board and get it up level with this surface here. It's going to be a bit different because it's impossible to try and match this wood grain and stain color very well. So what I have done is I laid out some marks here that I want to cut this to make a you know pretty well square hole. And I've got one radius here that I'm going to be able to use. It's kind of like my base radius. And that turns out to be an inch and a half radius. So I'm going to drill other radiuses at an inch and a half that I've marked out here. And then I will drill those out. Then I'll complete these as well as I can. And then I'll flush them up well with a router trim bit. To give you a better view on how I'm laying out my marks on this to cut out this cavity. So putting in a new replacement. Um, what I did is I found out that this edge here is parallel with the front edge of the table here. So the equal spacing all the way across there. So I'm using this as my baseline for making my measurements here. Over here on this corner I wanted to make where I've got at least an inch and a half for the diameter of this Forstner bit hole that I'm going to drill out of there. So I marked that over an inch and a half then I used my square here, brought that over to the edge of the circle over there, then made sure that the front edge of this is equal all the way across here. Rather than using my fingers, usually I'll use a small piece of board to make sure that's fronted up there and in the right place. Then I can use the Sharpie marker and I draw my line all the way up across here. And I'm going to come up even with the top of these holes here but I went a little bit beyond there and then I'll come back and do these. To do those I just kind of flip this around, position this at the very top edge of those holes then drew a sharpie line across there and it'll go all the way across and this edge will parallel or join up across there which I did here. Then I took my circle templates such as these and used the inch and a half one that I've got here and position that on there so that the edges of these lines match up. Then I could just make tick marks for these crosshairs there where they're at so I can find the center of the hole. Then I remove that. I can use the edge of this to line up with the tick marks there. Draw a sharpie mark that way, another one across the other way. And I've got the center of the hole. And then I used a scratch awl to indent that point for the point of my Forstner bit to center itself into. So what I will do is I'm going to clamp up some boards on these underneath and to give a backing when I drill through there. For each hole I'll do that. Then once I've got the holes drilled out then I'll work on a rough cut cutting these lines out to get the rest of this waste out of there. Then I will use a router bit to go around and flush that up nice and square and trim. All right this is uh relatively small piece of wood that I'm clamping in there for the space that's available but it works so it's a little bit precarious sometimes where you place your clamps so I've got these clamps there piece of wood behind 
I'm going to use this inch and a half Forstner bit, get it centered on that scribe that I made there for the centering the hole. Like that. Now this is being a rather large Forstner bit, so I'm going to take it kind of slow and easy. So you can see I got this hole going pretty well. Good alignment with the edge of my marks. So it's doing good. Clear it out a little bit so I can see how far I'm getting. I'm almost all the way through. Yeah, it looks like I'm through. So I'm past all the uh, fiberboard or whatever it was uh, underneath there. So that's how it comes out. Okay, took the clamps and everything off. Board is all the way through. So that'll work great. I'll just do the other two holes now. I have taped off these edges here where I'm going to cut along these mark lines here. I'm going to cut a little bit off from the mark lines, not up to the mark lines. That'll leave me a little bit there that I can clean up with a router uh, later on. So I put down the blue tape to protect the finish from the foot of the jigsaw. So I'm going to go through and cut these out. Okay, I'm going to cut out here and finish this cut along here because I'm going to be getting my big head in the way down here at the lens so I can see where I'm going on that line. Okay, I've got all these pieces roughly cut out, so now I can take this tape off. Then I'll work on making my rudder guides to go around and clean all these edges up, make these all perfectly even so they're like this original first hole is. I forgot to have my camera on when I went out and trimmed out, cleaned this out with my router, but to show you what I did is I took a straight edge and double stick taped that onto the um, side there along my layout marks, got it stuck on there and then I used my router with a straight bit and a bearing on the top here to guide it along this straight edge and I've got like a footer on the base of my router to give me some balance here because this is pretty <laughs> precarious uh, so that gives me some balance so I can have you know a good level cut without wiggling too much so still yet yeah, it's kind of a precarious footing there because of its being so narrow and I'm using a compact router instead of a full-size router. That's because of the space I'm kind of limited to that I decided to go with that. But it came out pretty good and works really well. Got some good straight cuts all around and it works great. My next thing is I'm going to lay a piece on here that I'm used for filling in this hole. I'm going to trace from underneath here the pattern of this opening onto the bottom side of the piece I'm putting in. Then I'll go out to the bandsaw, roughly cut that to shape, and then use my oscillating sander to get it finessed to fit in good. Okay, so I'm gonna make my insert here. I took that piece of Luan, it's a three-quarter inch thick, and cut it to a dimension slightly larger than this cutout is. So I can put it on there, get it kind of evened out. Then I will go underneath and trace out the hole on the bottom side of this board. I'm picking this face up because it's the best looking face compared to the other one. This one's got a little bit of a goober here. Looks like a little wood putty or something, but might disappear under stain. But I try to pick the best side and use that. So this is fairly positioned. I'll hold this firmly on here as I try to trace along the pattern on the bottom side of it. Yeah. 
Went around it a few times, try and make sure I get a good mark on there and pull it up and I see that I do. Yep, looks good. So now I'll go to the bandsaw and I'll cut out along these lines here and then I'll sand it to finesse it to fit into this spot here. At the bandsaw here, I'm going to closely cut along my marks that I lined up here. And I'm going to get close but stay outside the layout line. Then I'll do the sanding on the power sander, oscillating sander, to get up close to these marks and make a good fit. Because I don't have enough space here to fit in here between, I'm going to have to cut these from the outer edge here like this. Okay, now what I'll do is get this cleaned up, sand it down to my marks on the sides here, and I'll keep kind of tweaking it until it fits into that cavity perfectly. All right, so here I'm sanding this up down to my mark lines. Getting pretty close and I keep finessing to make sure it fits. I'm working on the long edges now. I got this side so that that fits pretty good. Then, um, once I got that fitting, I'll make sure the corners fit well too. And what I do is I run this along my sander here like this to get it down. Then on the corners, I can rotate this around to round over the corners. So this kind of a belt, it gives me a nice flat surface here between these two white marks. I know I've got a good flat surface behind there. Try this on again. So I've got this top or insert to fit in here fairly good. And I may have to tweak it a little bit more. But now it's so close I want to put some supports in on the bottoms of these to hold the top up and in place. So what I'm going to do is clamp a piece in place here. I'm going to put two screws in the shorter ones. I'm going to use my drill bit here. It's got a tapered bit plus uh, makes a taper for the screw head too. And I'll be going up from underneath to drive these in. Since this it's a three quarter inch and this one's a little bit more than three quarter inch, I'm going to use an inch and a quarter screws in here put this in place. On these longer ones like this I'll probably put three screws on this to hold that in place. And that'll keep it from falling through and also because this top here is a little bit thinner than this surface here I'm going to have to shim it a little bit around there to get it up good and flat on top here. So I'll go ahead and get these holes drilled and the screws put in. I have decided to just go with these two supports here instead of having the other ones in there because this has 10 layers of uh, laminated here together that's going to give it a lot of strength also it's three quarter inch thick and it's not expanding that long of an expanse here that it needs that much more support so just going to use these and then next step I'm going to be doing here is getting this finished I've got this well, I put in some supports here Turned out these uh, MDF 3 16 thick works pretty good. Um, it's like this, shiny one side and then kind of rough on the other side. It's like 3 16 of an inch thick. And for this particular case here, that worked out great as a spacer that keeps us on a good level. And got this finessed and adjusted to get a good fit where it fits in very good. So I'll get this finish and I used a little bit of Georgian cherry stain, so it's gel stain, to hopefully get me about as close as I'm going to get. Uh, this is a little bit more of a brownish color and I think this is cherry here. And this is Luan. So even though this is a cherry stain, it can show up Kind of differently on different kinds of woods so but this person is not 
real concerned about making it uh, a perfect match. What they're concerned about is just making it a functional table for another purpose besides a sewing machine. So I will work on getting this stained up and then varnished and then I'll get this set in place here permanently. Well, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. You got some inspiration from it. And maybe you'll do some furniture repairs of your own too. If you did, please give me a like and share it with your family, friends, and fellow craftspersons. Also, please subscribe and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss anything. And I greatly appreciate all your comments, suggestions, and ideas. And I want to know what you want to see. So, if the ladies don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.